It is invisible. It is silent. Yet its firm monthly grasp has determined battles, destroyed empires, and deeply shaped the human experience. It has humbled giants and directly or indirectly caused some of the most important events in our history. Yet for centuries, these men have agonized in an embarrassed silence. Did Mozart have it? Probably. Thomas Jefferson, Charles Dickens, without a doubt. Uh, Lincoln? Stay with me here. Definitely had it. Well, I don't know that it's proven. I, I can't say uh, that it's proof yet, but, but I will say that I believe it, and uh, so does everyone else I know. The men who shaped our world were themselves shaped by something else, something perhaps far greater than the cause of their times. They were shaped by something, uh, well, else. Cyclical non-uterine dysmenorrhea is, is what the scientists call it. Uh, but I think male cramps says it better, uh, or at the very least, shorter. Michelangelo had menstrual cramps. Other historical type people had menstrual cramps. Sir Isaac Newton, Columbus, Galileo, uh, Kelvin, John Centigrade, uh, the Reverend Fahrenheit, uh, Dr. Celsius, mm, Louis Pasteur. He used to go by the name of Satchmo. Yeah, they used to call him Satchmo. He's quite a baseball player. These people were connected by a common thread, a common thread that has gone throughout history and I think that we're all aware of but are not speaking to. And if it's controversial, well then, all right, so be it. I'm saying it calls into question history, American history, world history. It calls into question the spelling of the word history. Male cramps have altered the course of history many times, many, many times. More times than I can count. I'd say about seven times. 